We get folks ask us all the time, can I reuse drip tape? And the answer is yes. Today I'm gonna to show you a couple ways you could reuse drip tape in your vegetable garden. Now there's a lot of compelling reasons why you wanna use drip tape in your vegetable garden. Number one is putting that water underneath the plant and conserving as much water as we can. If you've paid your water bill lately, you know water's gotten kind of pricey. When we put this drip irrigation underneath our plant, we don't waste any water. We're putting it directly where we need it. Another thing is fungal problems. A lot of times, leaf wetness causes disease in plants. And when we overhead irrigate, we keep that leaf wet longer than it needs to be and it sets us up for diseases. With drip irrigation, we cut that down and we don't put the moisture on the leaf, we put it underneath the plant where it needs to go anyway. When you make the investment into a drip irrigation, a lot of the components of drip irrigation can be used for years and years and years. The hard fittings, such as the row ends, the T's and the elbows, the figure eights, the row starts, and even the filter regulator combo can be used for a long, long time. I normally just take them up, rinse them out good, try to get the dirt off of them. On the filter regular combo, you know, you will every now and then have to take the filter out and clean it. But these things will last for years. Now I try to keep them out of direct sunlight. When not in use, I clean them up, put them inside my barn till I get ready to use them again. However, there are two components of the drip irrigation that we use as consumables. And one of them is drip tape and the other is mainline tubing. Now, you're probably gonna get two to three crops out of this at the most, and then after that, it's time to discard and use some new the next time. And it's not necessarily that they won't last, but it's just not worth the effort to try to roll this stuff up and try to reuse it again. Now, you can pull up your mainline tubing and use it again. We make have some goof plugs so you can put in those holes that you don't need, and you can use it again, but it's just not feasible uh, sometimes to do that. So we view these as, uh, you know, not necessarily reusable, consumables, but these hard fittings, you know, once you make the investment in those, they'll last you for years and years and years. So what would be the scenario you would want to reuse your drip tape and that you would not want to reuse it? Well, let's look at this patch right here, for example. This is where I grew my sweet corn in the spring and my row spacing is set up on 36 inches apart. Well, that's pretty standard row spacing, but what if I wanted to plant something on 40 inch spacing or if I wanted to plant something there? Then that would be a situation I would probably pull the drip tape up and put down new drip tape to get the exact spacing I wanted to get. Another thing too, if I was needing to till or cultivate the whole garden area there, maybe add amendments to it, I might would redo the drip tape. You know, if it worked out fine so I could pull the whole system out and move it over, possibly, but if it seemed to be too much trouble, that might be a good situation where you'd want to put down new drip tape. Now this is a situation where I'm going to reuse my drip tape and I'm going to show you how I did it. So this was my spring watermelon crop laid off on 30 inch rows. Well, I want to plant tomatoes, my fall tomato crop here on this end, and I want my row spacing different because I need more room for my tomatoes. So what I did was I used a tarp, or you can use Roundup either one, to spray the area here to kill the vegetation. Both of them do the same thing. And then I come in here and took my first row up, and here's my row I left, and then I took the next row up. That's gonna give me 60 inch row spacing, which works pretty good for my tomatoes. And I basically just cleaned it up with a rake best I could, got the excess vegetation off. Then I come in with my tiller, and I tilled on both sides but I did not tell where my drip tape was. So I got an ideal spot right here so I can reuse my drip tape and plant my fall tomatoes. On the opposite line of my header, where my row ends come out on my tape, I like to mark that some way. And I just use some spray paint here and I mark where the row is. So when I get ready to lay that drip line back in, I got something to go by and I don't have to remeasure. Now here's the second area of that watermelon plot and the row spacing over here on my drip tape is 30 inches. And that's gonna work perfect because I'm gonna plant flowers here or maybe some brassicas back here. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this drip tape back, work it up with my tiller, then I'm gonna lay the drip tape back down. When I put out new tape, I always bury it, but when I'm reusing tape, sometimes it's easier just to cover it on the ends and go to the middle and cover it some so it stays in place and the wind doesn't blow it around. Now, I don't use drip tape for every crop all the time. Prime example of this is this Benary Giant Mix Zinnia here. We're using this as a cover crop and also as a pollinator attractant. Now, if I was using this as a cut flower, this would be considered a high value crop for me because I'm getting money off of it. But when I use such crops as cover crops or just as pollinators, I feel like it doesn't justify the expense or trouble to use in drip tape. So I don't always use drip tape on those low value crops. Only on my high value crops do I use drip tape. It's a great technology that we didn't have years ago that we have now that affords us to grow a better crop, more economical, and it just works a lot better.